<laughs> Meanwhile, in Gluttony's belly. Hello? Ling's in here too, right? It's Ling's fault! That idiot prince! Who do you think you are to call me that? There he is. What's wrong? How do I know you're not envy in disguise? Oh, come on. Do you want me to recite the hotel room service menu from top to bottom? All right, you're Ling. And what about you? How do I know you're not Envy? You little runt! Will you come a little runt, you jerk? Okay, it's really you. Episode 25, Doorway of Darkness. How did we even get here? Yeah, and what is it? A wall! There has to be a wall! There has to be! No matter how huge this place is, if we keep heading straight, we're gonna reach the edge! This place does not follow normal laws. I still haven't found her yet. She's in good hands, don't worry. The Chang clan is one of the lowest ranked houses out of the 50 clans that make up the Xing Empire. We have little to no power at all. Huh? Maybe that's why I was drawn to her. She looked so helpless and weak, I couldn't help but identify with her. We've been through so much together. She's always been Sparring with partners. <laughs> so wrong not having her here now. If I don't return with a method for attaining immortality and present it to the Emperor, it's almost certain my clan will perish. That's why I risked my life crossing the desert with Xiao Mei. Oh, come on, come <laughs> out! You're gonna drown us all! <laughs> so Mei Chang, I guess, is a different clan than Ling. Maybe in some way that makes them competitors, because they're both looking for the secret of immortality to please the Emperor for different clans. Also, about that part with the Xiao Mei backstory, at first I was thinking, like, do we need this backstory? Do we need to know the backstory of how she found the panda? But actually, I think it was in some way about Mei Chang, not about the panda. I mean, she pretty much directly says that herself, right? Like, she says, maybe I felt pity on it because of my situation, right? Like, she's very low. She seems to be hopeless, have no chance. She's tiny. <laughs> but I noticed that Scar is listening, and that has to resonate with him on some level, because not only is he an animal lover, but also his case is sort of hopeless. He knows what it's like to be downtrodden. We've got some time before the sun comes up. There won't be as many guards patrolling the streets. Uh, you mean you're gonna help me try to find her? Good guy, Scar. He's a good person. At heart, yeah. He knows a thing or two about loss. So I'm sure he can identify with your worries about the fate of your clan. Right. What's the holdup? You coming or not? <laughs> yeah, let's go! Tough love. Blood doesn't make for good terrain. Better noticed. blood than stomach acid. We're still not any closer to an exit. I'm starving to death. The irony of starving to death in someone's stomach. I can't make it. Don't tell me. You're giving up so soon? Are you that pathetic? He has some, like, condition. He's always collapsing. Alright, fine then! Give up and die if you want, but you're not dragging me down! Nah, you care too much. I'm seriously leaving you here! <laughs> Go then! <laughs> <laughs> Not messing around, Ling. All right. <laughs> yeah, he can't help himself. And we know Ling would do the same thing for him, like he did for Lanfan. So hungry. I wish we could find something to eat. <laughs> That's pretty good at survival. Actually, you know, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> we'll find a rabbit or something. Leather goods are edible. We've got a meal. I hope this leads to a truth speech about how shoes are part of the circle of life. Oh man, that shoe filled me up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Yet. Why is that? It's all my fault that you're here. It is not. Besides, this place is a joke compared to what my teachers put me through. Exactly. You're sure optimistic? Not really, I'm just stubborn. And if I even think about giving up, I have Al's iron fist to look forward to. What's wrong? There's something out there. Is that? I thought so. I should have known. It Whoa! Was. It's definitely envy. I wasn't sure if he died in the last episode or not. Oddly, I find myself growing attached to the homunculi, especially over the course of the last couple episodes, where they've kind of been exploring and reinforcing the idea that they're human or have very human traits. They've done a great job with that. Starting maybe with greed, I think, was the first time I really started thinking about that. Even though greed was kind of a jerk. He was an independent thinker. And then you have the whole Bradley exploration. You have Lust talking about her humanity, her clear pain in the episode where she died, and all of their pain when she died, like Gluttony's pain. It's really good stuff. Please show me the way out of here! You're just going to 
going to start begging the enemy for help like that? You're not enemies right now. Just ask the pips. I mean the alchemist. He should have realized what place this is. I did notice something when Gluttony swallowed us. It was like I had a familiar feeling. Right, it was the so eye, too. you do remember, then. This isn't the first time you've been through this. <laughs> yeah, there it is. A portal of truth! Gluttony is a failed experiment by our father to create his own portal of truth. So this place, it exists somewhere in between reality and truth. In between? And I can assure you that there's no way out of here. The only option we've got is to sit here until our strength runs out. And that's it. All we can do is wait here to die. What does it mean? Is it like purgatory? <laughs> How did they get out of the truth the first time? I don't remember any relevant details. Except that they had to give something up. So maybe there's a sacrifice that has to be made. Or some fundamental realization about what the truth is. And what this failed truth is, by extension. Why do I have a sneaking suspicion that Envy is going to have to sacrifice himself? Damn it! I want to know who your father is! Who would try to create their own portal? It's Fuhrer Bradley, isn't it? <laughs> what, are you serious? Huh, nice try, but King Bradley's nothing more than a homunculus. King Bradley's not even at the top. And if the Fuhrer is on your side, then I'm guessing you're the ones behind Ishval. Oh, Ishval! <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a more enjoyable job than that. You remember the incident that started the war, right? I had always heard it was because a military officer accidentally shot an Ishvalan child. Yep. And the one that proudly pulled the trigger was none other than yours truly. It was Envy. So much for humanizing. You have no idea how good that felt. I ravaged their entire country with a single bullet. I mean, talk about invigorating. I take back everything I said. You destroyed my hometown. You drove out the Ishvalans. You're the one who turned Scar into a murderer. And it was you. You're the reason Winry's parents were killed. You're the one to blame. What the hell? He didn't budge. Okay then, if that's how you want it. Ed, get back! <laughs> What's going on? Did you notice his footprints back when we were all fighting in the forest? What? No. What's your point? Just that he's freakishly heavy for the size of his body. He might be a bit bigger than he looks. Yeah, a bit bigger. How is that a homunculus? They're supposed to be artificial humans, right? Yeah, they're really playing with us with that humanity stuff. They really dragged me in and whacked me with that one, with the Envy starting the war. I'm like, oh yeah, the hom homunculi. You know, they're not so bad. <laughs> Although I guess humanity is not limited to good qualities. All the sins are human sins. I'm scared. I don't want Father to be mad at me. Uh, what did you say? Father. You have a father? Uh-huh. Is he the one that made the homunculi? Father made us. Will you take me with you? Will you take me to meet your father? Wow. He'll be happy since you're a human sacrifice. Uh, oh, sure, right. That's why he'll want to meet me. And I guess I'll find out what that means. Wow, so you have Ed and Al both learning about father at the same time from different homunculi. I would love to meet father through Al, of course. In regards to the search for potential sacrifices, our only candidates are the Elric brothers. The whole council is involved in it. How have things been progressing along with Mustang's candidacy? That's a question for the Fuhrer. He plans on having a nice long talk with him. Yeah, meanwhile, Roy and the spider web. How long has all this been going on? The Amunculi have been controlling this entire nation since its inception. So all this time, you've been sitting back and laughing at our struggles? Hughes's child screeched throughout the entirety of his funeral. My hands were trembling with anger. How can you even say such a thing? You have a child, too. You're speaking of Selim? He's more well-behaved than that. And how do you think he'd react if he found out that his father was a homunculus? Was that a threat? You'll have to do better. Selim will never work as a point of weakness in my life. But you, on the other hand... 
I know exactly who to use as your weak point. Yeah, I think it was implied at some point that Bradley has plans for Salim. When we first saw him, he said something like, I wish I could help you, Daddy. And Bradley's like, well, maybe one day you will. <laughs> the most ominous thing ever. Roy looking like he's not playing chess very well here. He's sort of being outmaneuvered. Bradley definitely won that exchange, pointing out that Roy has way more to lose than he does. Lieutenant Hawkeye! What's wrong, She's Sergeant? still waiting. I received a memo from the Personnel Bureau. And, well, I'm being transferred to the Southern Command Center. <sighs> they transferred you? And I'm not the only one. Raiders being They're ripping sent apart to the his team. Command. And Warren Officer Fallman's been reassigned to the Northern Command. That just leaves Havoc, I think. Havoc, who's sort of out of action right now. What is this? This can't be right. Are you sure that these are my orders? Where are they sending you? First Lieutenant Reza Hawkeye is to report for duty at Central Command Center. <sighs> as personal assistant to Fuhrer Bradley. So we can keep an eye on her and have her as a pawn piece. Smart. Play with me! Let's play! Hell no! You go and play by yourself! <laughs> this isn't good! <laughs> no, it is not. Can you make a weapon? You got it! With this ocean of blood, there's plenty of iron to work with! Pretty stylish. Have the tackiest sense of taste. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Come on, Ling. You gonna insult me like that? Are you sure this is the right way, Gluttony? Uh huh. But this is the way. It can't be. Your father is living in Central. Figures. <laughs> No, I want to meet Father now. I want to meet him right now. What in the world? That was the most disastrous episode for Roy. I've always had a feeling, I've always had a very strong gut sense that Bradley knew just about everything, or he knew enough to stay one step ahead. They foreshadowed this a little bit in the flashback with Roy and Hughes when they're talking about their plans, and Bradley just, like, from way atop on the balcony gives him that look, right? Like, he's listening. And he's never once seemed concerned. But it works both ways, right? Like, Bradley might be making the same mistake that Roy made, which is not finishing strong and being a little bit overconfident. Now he's completely out in the open to Roy. He has Hawkeye as a chess piece that he can eliminate, but you can't count Roy out. And now Roy has more information than he's ever had before, which I think is a powerful thing in his hands. Also, I don't know if this will actually play into it at all, but they're completely ignoring Havoc, who we know is being geared up to come back, but they didn't transfer him, probably because he's injured. They haven't thought about him at all. That's another chess piece. <laughs> but I think what I'm most excited about is I'm excited about Al meeting Father. I'm really, really curious about who Father is. My initial like throw theories against the wall thing was that it was Hauenheim, but I'm reasonably sure that that's not the case anymore. One of the reasons is just like time-wise. The homunculi have been operating for what it seems like forever, so that sort of rules out Ed and Al's father, unless there's some kind of like time travel involved or something like that, which is not outside the possibilities, right? Especially if we're talking about the truth as existence, you know? Who knows? Could be Ed or Al for all I know in that case. But I feel like we're gonna get a lot of insight when Al comes face to face with him. That's such an Al thing to do, right? The greatest threat that he knows, he's like, well, maybe I could just talk to him. <laughs> That's one of the most beautiful things about Al. Like, he's just so, like, clear-headed and non-hateful. And then they threw me through that huge loop with Envy, making me feel terrible about, you know, me talking about how human they are. Right before they talk about the origin of the war in Ishval and the horrible thing that he did. I guess that's the point, right? That's the beauty of it, is that they're complex. The whole thing is complex. Like, gluttony can show really sympathetic emotions like pain and loss and fear, like a little child, but also can be terrible at the same time. I was looking for answers and some resolutions in this episode, but what I got was a lot more questions, which is just sort of the, the way. The way of the show. But that's the end of 25. I'll see you guys next time for episode 26.